The Pinball Network is online. Launching Triple Drain Pinball Podcast. Launching into episode, what episode are we on? We're on episode 50, Tom. This is 50? Why don't we have a guest? This is episode 50. Holy cow. (laughs) This is episode 5-0. First off, happy birthday, Travis. Travis just turned 40. Yes. Four right? zero. Thank you. He's got a That's DNA why we don't need a Felix guest. behind him. Yeah, I'm it's just like my regular birthday. Nobody's here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's good. It's good. Welcome yeah. to the club. Thank Did you, you blow up all those balloons with your hot air? What are we... I did not. No. <laughs> so Monica actually threw me a uh, surprise party. I was not Oh no kidding. I did not know about it. Because okay. that's what made it a surprise. Yeah. Some pinball You're people like... showed up. It was fun. We had drinks and yeah, one of my neighbors brought this, whatever contraption that is. I I don't even know what it is. Thanks for explaining what a surprise is, Travis. (laughs) (laughs) As the as the person that's 40 now in this, Mm. I think my facial hair is finally going to come in eventually. I'm pretty stoked about that. And uh, yeah, I'm Mm. glad to be on the good side with Tom (laughs) now on this. So. I don't know about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? All Facial right. hair shows up when you turn 40. I was told this okay. for like the past 25 years. I've 40 been told this. or so. 14, you know, well, one or the other. Just the, the hair on your head starts falling off too. So mm. maybe that, that's yeah. just going <laughs> to migrate. It'll, it's going to migrate down. For I you, mean, Travis. I've got enough Native American blood in me. I think I'm fine. It'll be good. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, Tom, you good? You ready to go for this? I, think so okay. tom sounds fired up to be honest with you he started, he started hot on this <laughs> got a lot of hot topics hot takes and just to make sure because last time we did this tom and we started yeah. off like super hot joel forgot to press record so no we are recording did you, are did you we push recording the I, have, I we are recording but i yeah. haven't hit the intro song yet so the people that okay. always skip like 60 seconds ahead are going to hear us talking and be like oh they haven't done it yet. <laughs> still talking <laughs> my god imagine All right, that. i'm doing it now we we're, we're three guys who like to talk pinball, so we came up with a clever name. A clever name. We're Joel and Travis got to talk pinball, and we call, call ourselves the triple, triple Drain. 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 Uh, triple drain. Oh man, I'm I'm debating how much of that I'm going to edit out. You know, <laughs> should I just leave it in and ruin None the song? Just None of it. This is the fiftieth episode. Ah, it's a reason true. to celebrate. Fifty you know, episodes, roughly. Travis has balloons. Roughly. I'll be two honest. Hours. I didn't think I'd be Joel's friend for that long. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> neither did Tyra, anybody else. Tyra hasn't started yet, Travis. So you know, that's <laughs> no. Um, no, so uh, 50 episodes, uh, roughly two hours an episode. That's 100 hours of us talking. And um, to anybody that's listening, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm sorry that this is how you're spending your time, but we do appreciate it. Yes. Um, we have a lot of fun with this. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can have another 50 more because this is uh, it's just fun. It's just fun to come together and talk. Um, but, yeah, we got a, we got a decent amount to cover. Um, we, uh, we, the last thing that we recorded was the, the, the intro or, like, the prep episode for texas not texas texas pinball festival i keep mixing texas pinball festival and texas chainsaw massacre which we're going to talk about i mean they're kind of the same thing uh yes clearly the exact same thing but (laughs) we went to um we went to tpf i say we as in travis and i were both there and then i know tom went to uh mgc so he was at he was at a show recently so just quick blanket statement to anybody and everybody that came up to us and said hey you know, thank you. Thank you for saying hi. It was awesome meeting so many cool fans, um, to see triple drain merch to, you know, to hear people that like the podcast that listen to the podcast. Um, it's incredibly humbling that, that, that people enjoy this conversation and, um, we really, really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, thanks for all the support, all the support on Patreon, all the support of just, yeah, people saying hi, sh- shook our hand, gave us a hug, all that stuff. Really, really appreciate it. Um, also, um, multiple multiple people reminded travis that barry ausler did not design taxi and i am so grateful for that uh (laughs) travis travis got there a day before i did and he just started texting us every time he's like eight people eight people have said this in within you know this is my personal hell yeah it's so great um and i definitely heard the the drop drop in the uh drop in the groundhog you know it's just uh it, it brought me pure joy 
that um, we recorded that episode when we did because it basically guaranteed uh, Travis getting heckled for like the next. It was great. Didn't you love it, Travis? 72 hours straight. <laughs> I, I mean, it's heckling. nothing new. It's true. It's it's nothing new <laughs> and it's deserved. That's really when you what you get it comes a double zero in a finals of a major championship. I mean, you that can't streamed to thousands of people. No. Hey, he we've gone, the, we, we have ground. gone Tens over this. Thousands. We've we've gone over. Yeah. Yeah. I felt bad for Escher, <laughs> felt bad for Jason. Uh, Elwin yeah, yeah. obviously needs all the help he can get. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just figured just let the ball drain, just establish dominance. Yeah, yeah. you only need two balls, apparently. Yeah, it didn't you, work. I lost Joel. So yeah. you guys did a, <laughs> you guys did a great job <laughs> announcing yeah. on the uh the wormhole pinball. Oh yeah. Um, um, yeah, we Twitch. became a mini meme thanks to that as well. Yeah, yep. that was a uh, that was a good time. Uh, that was entertaining. Was Jamie, was I think is his name. Jamie yes. at Wormhole. He had reached out and said, "Hey, would you guys be interested in in commentating?" And we, yeah, we were like, "Yeah, let's give it a shot." Joel's so like, had, "I love to talk." Yeah, it was great. <laughs> well, I was in the middle of doing uh, what was it? The trivia. So yeah. naturally, I was roughly like. I don't know, three or four whiskeys into the night. And Joel's like, hey, do you want to do pinball commentary? And I was like, why not? <laughs> We're doing Let's it. Do it. So, yeah. yeah. Joel was all in because he won I did. at trivia at the very beginning. Somehow. He so, won a banner or something. Yeah. So Dang. At, at TPF. Yeah, I'm real smart. Um, no, I'm no, smart he just, because I made... He followed Ron Hallett the whole That's entire my, time. That was it. <laughs> and then he broke away at the end. He's like, I'm going to take a chance. Yep. <laughs> so t- at tpf they do this trivia night where they get a whole bunch of stuff so t-shirts banners everything all the different manufacturers give away a bunch of stuff and um, they have these trivia questions and the way that they do it is there's always there's it's either going to be one of two answers and so there's a whole crowd if you want answer a you go to this side answer b to that side and i told i told ron hallett i told everybody i was like i am following ron hallett this guy knows his stuff He's the only smart part of Pinball Chronicles. He actually knows <laughs> history. So if you're going to follow somebody, follow Ron Hallett. And so I was, I was following Ron Hallett and we got down to, I think we got down to like six people and they were about to just give out prizes to the six people, but they're like, nah, I do one more question. And so I don't remember the exact question. I think it was something like, what was Barry Alser's last commercially released game does that ring a bell it was and it was between junkyard and not taxi i'll not tell you that right no, now not taxi. <laughs> i forget what the other one was but all six people including myself picked question a so the problem what happened answer was the, a answer a yes no. what had happened the round it's before was it got down to the same thing it was like six or five or six people everybody picked one answer and they were all wrong they were all wrong. And I remembered mm-hmm. that. So I was like, we're all on this. Ron seemed skeptical. We were all kind of talking amongst ourselves, you know, is it this or this? Well, it depends on if they're going to go with this or that. So we're all standing there. And last minute, I jumped over to the other side. So I was the one person that picked the other answer. And guess what? I was the only one that was right. So I was pumped. I won a banner. Nice. And if you win a banner, you're not allowed to play anymore. So I was done. <laughs> so I, I won a banner and 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 walked away. Uh, felt real, real good. But Good good news is Ron Hallett won multiple prizes <laughs> throughout the night. So if you go to TPF, find Ron Hallett and just follow him. That guy knows his stuff. But um, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was great doing commentary um, for um, the tournament. Travis didn't play in the tournament this year. So TPF for you was a completely different experience, right, than previous tournament. Oh, yeah. No, it was, yeah. it was fun. I got to get heckled. I got to walk around, talk to people, got to actually eat barbecue, which was nice Yeah, uh, down there. Texas barbecue is um, fantastic. Oh, yeah. We went to this one place. What was it? Hard Eight? Hard Eight. Yep. That's, that's, that's yeah. the one I said you got to go to. That's the Not one Brian Shepard took Neil and I to. Yeah. Hard no, it Eight. Was, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, I definitely McCray would recommend to people that. to go that to That was it. awesome. What would you say, Travis? Sorry? No, I was saying I, w- I would definitely go to that. Oh, it was like awesome. It was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even go for the pinball anymore. Just go for the barbecue. When you go to a bar- barbecue place in Texas, you have to go, you have to wait in a line. Mm-hmm. You have to go up to the counter and say, I want a half pound of that. I want that. I want that. It's not like a sit down. No. You know, and they bring it to you. No. It's all, the, all the meat's awesome. out on display. Yeah. All the meat's out on display. <laughs> and you're just give me a little bit of this and that. And they weigh yeah. it. 
and then they pay you. Um, my only complaint they is they pay you too. They, Damn, you pay them. <laughs> you oh, pay them. God, I gotta go to but, this place. My only complaint is, you know, <laughs> while I'm waiting for my food, I was looking around and I'm like, man, if I had a pinball machine to play right now, that's really what I just feel <laughs> yeah. like the barbecue yeah. restaurant needed <laughs> needs a pinball machine. Um, I don't know what theme necessarily. That's what but... Joel did. Joel was getting his meat and everything. He's yeah. like, do you guys have any barbecue challenge here <laughs> yeah. that I could play? And that, yeah, that's that's how Joel sounds in Texas. Mm-hmm. Like, legitimately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly like that. Changes his accent. It was a yeah. whole deal. Like Neil McRae was there. I think Bob was there. Like it was a whole deal. Like, it was a great me. time. It was throwing us off. No, it was a great place. Like it's if you get a chance to go to TPF, just in general, just the atmosphere is awesome because of that. Because you get to see a lot of friends, you get to play a lot of pinball. If you if you're into tournaments, you get to play tournaments. If you're not into that, there's all this other stuff to do. Yeah, like was like a a big smoke for cigars. You yeah. got arcade games that are there. You got vendors that are there. You got plenty of food to go eat. And this year, I act, I enjoyed this year so much more than previous years for a variety of reasons. Not just like not playing the tournament. Like I wasn't stuck there the whole time. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Just the vibe at TPF was just completely different. In previous years i i don't know why that is exactly it's because Be- people aren't fighting over twippy awards yeah it's well <laughs> it, it could have been that i no. don't know it was just it was like everywhere you went people were happy to be there there yep. wasn't any grumpy people there there weren't people complaining at all besides i don't know maybe maybe my sons because i wasn't playing cuphead well enough with them but cuphead? outside of that it's yeah they had a cuphead arcade there and i kept dying that? It's, it's like a video it, game. Yeah, it's Remember a video I'm game like, that's very hard to play. 40. Yeah, oh. it, exactly. Yeah. My hand eye coordination does not apply to that. Pinball, yes. But but no, everything else, it was just I don't know. It was fun. And I tried to make it a point to go to different seminars to talk to as many people as I could. I know I didn't get to talk to everybody, but I I don't know. It was just a different vibe. And the lines weren't super long either. No. So it felt like that there was less people there, but more pinball machines were there. So they had pinball machines even out in the hall this time. And that just made it just so much better. That's cool. Even though Joel and I got kicked off a machine day one. Still, <laughs> after that, I got over that and it was just so much better. Well, yeah. there were machines. Did, did they know who you were? <laughs> no. no. No, we were we, to them. Travis was a person without a wristband. That's, what <laughs> was. They, that's all he was to them. Um, no, it was awesome. Uh, you know, some of the other podcasters have talked about this. They changed the layout of the room. And um, I think, I don't know, I haven't seen official numbers, but it definitely felt like there was less people there than last year. And so just overall, it felt less crowded. So, um, you know, I remember two years ago, two years ago when Pulp Fiction was released, that was the thing. It was like um, the the line for that, you would wait in that forever. Or that's when Godfather was released. So it's like a lot of people waiting in line for Godfather. A lot of people that had like one weird owl one or two. So a lot of people waiting in line for Weird Al and then a lot of people waiting in line for Pulp Fiction. And Pulp Fiction is a rather brutal game. So you get up there and play and it's just like, I just remember that. It felt crowded. It felt tight. Not this. It felt just the layout. It seemed like there were more games there. All the games that you want to play were there. Um, And maybe it was a combination of more games, less people, better layout, but it was just really awesome. It was really relaxed, really nice. I would say this, I've said this before, if if you love this hobby and you if there's any chance you can go to a pinball show, I would prioritize either Chicago Pinball Festival or Texas Pinball Festival. Chicago Pinball Expo or Texas Pinball Festival. Those two, I've been to both. They are both fantastic. Um, and it's the best way to meet people. There's a lot of people from the industry there. Um, so, you know, a bunch of people from JJP as well as Stern, all the spooky guys were there. All the barrels of fun guys were there. Multimorphic team was there. Um, it was great. It was great. But now which one do you like better? What between the two shows? Yeah. Let's get you um, off the fence. I'm a, I'll say TPF. I've been to both. I thoroughly enjoy TPF much better than Expo. Say, it's not that Expo is yeah, bad. Yeah. It's just the vibe of TPF. I just like it a lot better. TPF. It's warm. It's warm, except for it rained the whole time we are there. But it's warmer down there. There's really good places sirens. to walk and eat food. Um, so it's just the location is better. I am. I do like Chicago, though, because I can drive. I can drive there. I'm there. Um, and there's more industry people at Chicago because it's Chicago. But um, 
no, it was great. It was really, really good. Didn't so, you just name off everybody though? Pretty much that was yeah, there at TPF. But like part Stern of the brings like every Stern employee to Chicago. It's you know there was a handful of them ah. there at um was at, was Keith there? Keith was not because it was Keith's birthday. So happy was, birthday, was, Keith. Was Raymond there? Red A was not because he's a bum. You just said everybody was there. No, I said a handful of oh, people okay. were at Texas. No, he's talking about Chicago. TPI. Tom's talking was about there. Expo. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. Yes, everyone was there. Oh, everybody okay. was there. Yes, Texas. I ran into. Um, See, Elizabeth I feel like Kiesky right was now, there. Dwight Sullivan even, was there. Yeah, Brian Eddy. This Tanyo. isn't even about TPF and Expo anymore. This is about you sucking up to Stern. That's what, no, that's what I feel no. like we've kind of veered off. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> can look and see, oh, these people are there. Um, Tom, where did we awesome. exit off here to the ass kissing portion? <laughs> that's not what I said. I, did, I wasn't like, hey, I got to hang out with my friends. Oh, by their name, by the way, their names are George Gomez. No, that's not what I said doing that. I did not okay, get to hang right. out with George Gomez. You weren't name dropping at all. Gotcha. I, Tom said who was there. So I was listing the names <laughs> of who was there. <laughs> that's not name dropping. That's answering a question. Um, so let's actually go through the games. We we did this last time, but it's like, let's actually give our first impressions here. Um, and we'll start with uh, Elton John. Why not? I, I know I've streamed Elton John. I've played the heck out of it. Um, Travis actually had a chance to put some time on Elton John. Typically, when I looked for where's Travis, I found you a lot on Elton John. Um if you guys want to share that, Tom, why have you not bought an Elton John yet? You, you, you like buying um, games. It's just mainly the theme. Like I like Elton John music. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but it, it theme and price, man, yeah. they're, they're priced kind of high. Um, you know, don't look at the LEs behind me, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, but I can also go down the street and play one. Cause there's one at lumberjack Johnny's in Appleton. Okay. So, and he, uh, Dave Oshevsky, the owner, uh, he put his uh, collector's edition there too. Oh wow! So uh, really nice, really yeah. nice game. Uh, I think the game is amazing. Like it shoots well. It's great. It's probably the best Jersey Jack pinball game in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I j it's just the theme. It, the theme doesn't like totally grab me. But if I was a huge Elton John fan. I would have one in my house right now. I uh, yep, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Travis, why'd you keep playing it all the time at TPF? It was just it was fun to play. Uh, yeah. When it comes to the theme, I'll be honest, I don't care for the theme at all. I I know some Elton John songs, but seeing how I'm a young forty, <laughs> a very young forty, <laughs> I, I don't know too many. I, I didn't grow up on Elton John, basically. So you know, but the pen shot great. Yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I think I was just surprised that it, and so here's the thing, and we've talked about this back and forth, and this is either going to sound like a diss or it's going to sound like a great thing. I don't know, but it didn't feel like a JJP. Oh, that makes sense, wow. Right? Sick burn, bro. Right. Well, no, I'm sick. You know, there's somebody out there. It's like, oh, you're, <laughs> yeah, but I, what I'm, what I'm getting at is, with is, that. Yeah. You're it's right. Like, no, yeah. The flippers didn't feel spongy. It, mm -hmm. it felt like it had, solid flow it, it felt more towards where stern is right mm -hmm. and it matched what stern does in a lot of spots and that's not to say like godfather or wonka or something like that didn't it, it just had the snappy fill mm -hmm. to the flippers and the shots felt felt solid there was a couple of really cool shots there too especially whenever the ball got launched and you saw it go around i guess uh, the habit trail or whatever you want to call it, it just yeah, loops the around real shot. quick yeah, it, yeah, there's some, just some cool shots there. So, you know, th those parts were cool to me. The sound package, it sounded a lot better in person than what I was expecting because it's just like with Toy Story, right? It just kind of sound like a slot machine with Toy Story 4. I didn't really get that feeling as much with this. And I don't know why that is. Maybe because it just doesn't have those types of sounds. I don't know. But either way, the game was just fun to shoot. Uh, I didn't really know the rules or anything. I wasn't really paying attention to the rules. I just knew, well, if I put the ball here enough, multi ball start there, yeah. hit this enough, something will happen there. But I was just completely focused on just the experience, the shots, and watching other people and asking other people, hey, what do you think? There's, I mean, overwhelmingly, people were really enjoying playing the game. 
But the key part was, is I would ask them, well, are you going to, are you looking at getting one? And it was just instantly, no, no, no. no. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of weird. And I don't know if that's, I didn't dig any further. I don't know if that's pricing. I don't know if it's theme, but it's just one of those weird pens to where people are really enjoying it, but they don't seem like they're wanting to adopt it. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know why that is. I, I, I so. think it's price. I honestly do. Well, price plus you look at pretty much the last the last few JJP games, you buy them, you buy them at that high price, but they don't stay at that price. I mean, no. if you go to resell that game, it's just I feel like it's but, just like a industry. But that can shift with supply standard. and demand too. If not yeah. a lot of people are buying it. Look at pirates. I mean, yeah. pirates goes for crazy money. Yeah. It's it's so pinball, yeah. The pinball enthusiasts, they're everybody's just in this weird spot. And I've been noticing this a lot in the past several months. And we've talked about this too, off the podcast and everything that there's just a lot of people are basing their decision-making over whether they want to get a game today based off how much money they think they're going to lose. Yeah. Right. And so it's kind of like, it's this weird spot because there's a lot of people out there that don't consume pinball content that don't do that at all. They just Mm -hmm. want to buy a game because they're like, oh, pinball's fun. I have disposable income. I want to play the game. I'm going to get the game. I'm going to play it. Whereas I've noticed it's just, it's exclusively the pinball enthusiast who consumes content Mm -hmm. that all of a sudden the fun equation is secondary to, am I going to lose money on this or not? It's almost like that's the game they're playing instead of the actual game of just playing pinball, you know, and I get it if that's how somebody wants to approach it. Right. And that's all they know. It is what it is. But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are missing out on unique opportunities to play a game over the fear of dropping what two, three, four, five thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. Don't get me wrong. That's a valid fear. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, that's if you plan on selling it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's just kind of like, I don't know if you budget correctly and you're approaching it well. What's my fun factor going to be? Like, why not go for that? I just feel like there's so many people get frozen, right? They, they freeze themselves out from even buying a game, from playing a game, from even thinking about the game. Mm-hmm. And then they want to wait several months down the road. But you know what happens? They're waiting for some magical game to come out. And then when it does or doesn't come out, they're still frozen. And then they're still not buying a used game anyways. That's the weirdest part. Because otherwise we'd be seeing these games just going through the paces and being sold left and right. And we're not really seeing that. And that's the curious part about Elton John. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. But from the people that I am aware of that have bought the game, they're all extremely happy Oh yeah, with their purchase. I, you know, it's the same way with Jaws. Everybody's yeah. extremely happy with their purchase. And the funny part is it's the same thing with Venom. Obviously, sales weren't quite where Stern or anybody else wanted them. But the people that are buying it, are happy with their purchase overall. It's pretty rare that somebody buys a game that decides to take that leap of faith and they're just like crushed by it. I, uh, they're just so pissed off that they bought that game and they want nothing to do with it. Not saying it doesn't happen, yeah, but it's rare. I think it's, it's I think it's clear that if you are uh, if you're an Elton John fan and you're a pinball fan, like especially if you're a diehard Elton John fan, you bought the game, you're you love the game. But yeah. it's, I think for many years, people were willing to just, oh, I'll buy a game. Worst case, I sell it and I get my money back or I lose a little bit of money. I mean, there was a lot of people, especially when demand or the supply was down, they would buy almost every new release, every Stern game, just like, whatever, I'll buy it. I'll put some games on it and I'll sell it. It's it, There was no, it, it wasn't a worry. But um, Elton John, I think it's, there's a lot of people in this hobby that are like, I'm not an Elton John fan, but boy, does that game look fun, but not fun enough for me to risk losing a $2,000 like investment because they've already made it out in their head where it's a theme that I don't want to own. So it's not going to be a keeper. I'm not going to be tempted to keep it. So if I buy it, it's just going to be for a period of time before I want to sell it. And that's not, no, they're just not taking that chance. But honestly, I've said it before. Elton John is one of the games that I, I genuinely miss. I miss having my kids miss me having it. Um, my brother asked about the game. Like it's, it's really, really good. And I, and I bet there are people that bought the game with the intent of, yeah, I'll own it six months maybe, and then 
turn on to the next one and i don't know if they're, they're selling I, I haven't really seen them on the used market it just seems like a lot yeah. of people are, I mean, well, are you never them. know and what you just said is completely valid if you yeah. are not a huge fan of a theme yeah it's probably not the smartest thing to be plopping down thousands of dollars for a product unless you absolutely know what type of layouts you like mm-hmm. and what type of gameplay you like and that's how i i'm able to judge a lot of games that i bring in is it's not just the theme but if I feel like I'm going to have fun to a certain extent with what the layout is, how the rules are, so on and so forth, then yeah, I'm going to think about getting that game. And everybody's going to buy for different reasons. I, I just think if you are exclusively in this hobby because you want to be able to buy a game, not lose any money, or buy a game just to flip it and yeah. make a profit in the future, you're going to be in for a rough time because that's not where the industry is at. And that's not where it's going to be for a very, very, very long time because well, there's so many companies coming out with games yeah supply right has met yeah. demand for the most part stern is cranking out games so like you're gonna just you're basically just making yourself set on the sideline true so Tom, i what what i would encourage people is if you have a theme that you want like get the game give it a shot, enjoy, yeah yeah enjoy the game like why not tom let me ask you this because you Sure. You buy a lot of LEs, but like when you bought Foo Fighters, like Foo Fighters is a big band, like you're a big fan of that. So when you bought the LE, it was a, I, I have full intention of owning this game for a long time. Same thing with Jaws. Right. You bought Jaws LE. I, I have plans on owning this for a long time. But you yep. bought a, originally you bought a Bond Pro. So like clearly when you yes. bought the Bond Pro, it wasn't, it wasn't with the mentality of I'm going to own this a long time. You no. bought it for what reasons? Yeah, I well, mainly just to play it, you know, okay. being a pinball fan, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to give this game a chance, mm-hmm. but I immediately put it on route too. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I had it in my house where I could, you know, play it every night if I wanted to, you know, I had a, I'd have to drive to a location to play it. But uh, the Bond, it, it, and it was mainly because of the Bond theme. It was just okay. not a uh you know it i i wasn't into watching bond movies growing up you know uh i watched a few of them but it, it just wasn't something that like really grabbed me uh but now i own a bond premium because i like i like the gameplay and stuff yeah. so you know yeah but i think it's interesting you had a mentality buying that pro of like i'm going to basically take a chance i'm going to take a chance yeah. on this um, but yet it, it's easy to do that with a pro or pro pricing, but you're saying it's, you can't just, you're not going to take a chance on a $12,000 Elton John. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm hearing it from a lot of people is really what it comes down to. I, I mean, I have a local collector friend who he flips games all the time, but it's just like, there's something about that, that threshold of like a $12,000 investment. But what's interesting is, you know, I'll see him, he'll buy two pros, you know, without second guessing it. And that's the same amount of money, but yet like, and it's just a mental thing of like two games is a lot easier to digest, to flip those than one game. That's, I don't know. It's just, it, it just comes down to threshold is all it is. It comes down to threshold and it comes down to you as the end consumer. Like whether it's you, Joel, you, Tom, or you, the listener, or you, the viewer out there, it just comes down to what do you value? And if you value playing pinball, if you value fun, if you value bringing something in for your family to play, for you to play, you'll figure out how to make it work if it fits within your budget. Mm -hmm. Now, if you value money more than that, (laughs) like that's your priority. And yeah, of course, you're going to view it through that prism that I don't want to lose X amount of money. Right. You know, and it's, it's a unique thing. There's not too many other things in life outside of, I don't know, maybe our mortgage or something that we will spend an obscene amount of money on something with hopes that we're going to get a return back on it as something that we will actively use in our daily life. And for whatever, like pinball has been yeah. just brought into that. And that's fine. It's just, there's a lot of people out there though, that are out there that enjoy pinball for what it is. It's a game that's meant to be played and it's meant to be enjoyed. And that's where their priority and their focus is. Like neither one's wrong. Yeah. It's just people just view it through different ways. I mean, that's perfectly valid from both sides. Yeah. 
Well, we've got a lot. Yeah, we got a lot more games to go through. Um, <laughs> but I know I agree. Like it's weird, Elton John. I just feel like that that game is done is genuinely done everything right, everything right except for it's just a very polarizing theme, and it, not that people love or hate the theme. It's just I think people love the theme or they like it, but not enough. And well, it's just it's just tough. Um, let's face facts. If that layout was Led Zeppelin, oh yeah. Or yeah, that's fair. I mean, we'll just say the quiet part out loud. That's what everybody's thinking. That layout was Led Zeppelin. It would be a much different story. But there is yeah. no staircase to in the game, Travis. You know? <laughs> yeah, of and course the, you need that. <laughs> yeah. They you just they replace the piano. The piano just do it's a just a guy walking upstairs. That's but all. But that just is. like I said, it goes it's different companies. It's different bombs, it's different strategies, it's different licensors, like allowing stuff, approving stuff. So sure. Yeah, this is just like a pie in the sky thing of saying, oh, yeah, if it would have been this, like, of course, yeah, if they would have put $50,000 worth of R&D into just one machine and sold it for 5000 they would probably sell like a million of them, but they wouldn't make anything back. So, yeah, yeah. it's just it's a unique industry. But yeah. So um, what is what is it like Jersey Jack? We did. Are we giving two thumbs up? I think they're doing. They just, I I like I I, like I don't it. know a single person that has played. I don't know any other podcaster. I don't know anybody that's played the game and had anything negative to say. The art's great. The sounds great. The I don't. There's nothing negative about the game. It's just at the end of the day, it's Elton John. Price, yeah. I mean, price and theme price and Elton John. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's and that's fair. That's valid. I, for I people think the say game, that. if it was priced at a stern premium, yeah, we'd we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. That's true. If the it was, question if is, it was is would that grand, game be able to be priced at that? That's the question. Like, would it still look like it does? Oh, man. Well, that's if they were a great to, question. It might you know, not. Well, it's what tough. was, what was a, um, what was a Guns N' Roses, not standard, but the Nor LE? What was yeah, that but price that, that, that was, was about eight that grand when it stuff. first came yeah. out, and then that they was a lot of inflation nine. ago, though. That was yeah, a lot true. of inflation ago. That's that a true. whole other lifetime. I just think I'm pretty confident if somebody sold a used Elton John for mm-hmm. under ten grand, it would be on Pinside for one minute. It'd be gone. Yeah, instantly. Gone. Yeah, no yeah. doubt, because the demand is there. I actually think people want the game, but people just are frozen at twelve thousand dollars new in box. They're just frozen. They're waiting. They're waiting for used. And this may be one of those games in five years that our cl- people are clamoring for them because not a ton of, you know, I don't know. So here's first, a great question. First world then. problems. Really. Well, yeah, exactly, Tom. <laughs> what would a standard, I know we got to get to other games, but what would a standard look like for Elton John? Because we know that a standard was out for Guns N' Roses, and there's a reason why they don't do standards anymore. Yeah, so, I, think you would, I think you'd have to take all the toys out. Like, well, you'd yeah, have, you'd, you'd not have, no moving Elton. No, it would be just you a wouldn't have the LEDs thing. on the piano. It'd would the side so just be a target? You think? I think you could leave the the layout. I think you could leave the layout. I think just like the crocodile bops up and down, that could be a static thing. There's a I'm rocket ship this, mold. I'm gonna lean into this joke, Joel. Oh. <laughs> just totally no sold it. It's an awesome joke. Tom got try, it. Try it again. Maybe the second attempt will be better. Okay, there, I'll, I'm okay, ready. I'll try. Yep. Sorry, I, I probably stuttered stuttered over my one second. Hang on. Yeah, this is, let me edit, just find the script that you wrote for the no, jokes, because no, no, I didn't write this one. <laughs> yeah, okay, try it again. <laughs> they should probably just take the side ramp and just put a target there instead. Oh, yeah, like what they did in Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 God, shit, uh, that didn't land man, at all, did it? Were- <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we even Hopefully went back people are it. really dropped off the, the road. Hog on that one, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, I like the game. I'll just I'll end it there. I like the game. Yeah, it, I, it's it, it's fun to play. Like it, it says something if you don't like the theme, but you keep coming back to play the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so there and you I'm, go. Like, I'm looking forward to playing it more, honestly. Um, but uh, transition, Jaws, <laughs> Jaws. Tom, you've had your LE a while now. Has, have your yes. overall thoughts on Jaws changed at all? Better no, for worse? No, it's a great anything? game. Okay. Um, solid review. Yep. Thank B you. B plus? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, two thumbs up. Uh, a plus. Okay. I um, <laughs> I played the premium. I played the premium at um, Texas. I had not played the premium before. Um, for whatever reason, I felt like hitting that upper play field was harder. It doesn't make any sense because the wave ramp is the same wave ramp. I think it is just, uh, it is a more challenging shot, like, cause you have to hit it clean, but, um, but 
if I loved it, man, I love that that upper play field is unlike any other upper play field I've played because it's so fast. Um, you got to know what you want to do on the upper play field before you hit the shot because otherwise it's just it's off it's off the upper play field it, it's just um, so much better having the shark come out of a play field and bash in it that, that is really neat that captive ball over yep. and over again that is really neat um you know just because you mentioned the shark the shark eater mod the guy has released a premium version of that mod i know i had some strong takes some strong what? views on that mod yes there's a premium version of it of it well okay i mean I will give the guy props. What he's done from a mechanical engineering standpoint is is really impressive. The guy, what he's done. Um, but with that said, now that I've played the complete game, as in Elwin's full vision of the game, the the premium, I have zero complaints with the way the shark is. I don't. I don't. It. No bit of me feels that that shark needs to eat the ball. No bit of me. Um, I you like heard how it quick here. it is. Air quotes. Joel said. Joel, <laughs> Joel approved stamp. No. Yes. Um, I just think, honestly, if the shark ate the ball, it would have to be for a final wizard mode moment. I don't want that every single time. It would have to be a big moment. And on a side note, I have a Star Wars right now that I've been borrowing, and it's a premium. Blowing up the Death Star is a really cool moment, but that's the only time in the game where the Death Star mech opens up. The only time. And so I've streamed that game twice. I've played it for roughly four plus hours. I've seen that mech open up one time, one time. And that to me, it's just, I don't, I just, I'm not saying it's a waste of money to, to invest in a mech that rarely people are going to see, but Jaws, I'm glad the, I'm glad the shark doesn't eat the ball every, every single time. And, and if it was a mech that only happens in one mode, it would be a waste of a mech. I'm glad that Elwin chose to use the bomb, the the money in other places. So I do feel I had a blast with the pro when I was streaming it. I really enjoyed playing the premium. I think Zach has intention of getting me a premium at some point to stream, hopefully when there's a next, you know, a next major update kind of thing. So nice. I'm really looking forward to playing that game more. Um, Travis, I know you've played the heck out of it because the pinball company has made multiple tutorial videos on it. Um, do you have any hot takes on like, longevity of this a lot of people are where's jaws gonna fall in the realm of elwin games um you know so when it comes to design and everything it, it's i probably put it just in the middle of the pack with everything and that's okay. not a bad thing it's just godzilla is excellent jurassic park is excellent and i honestly feel like jaws is excellent as well so mm -hmm. i would put it I personally like it a little bit better than Avengers and I loved Avengers. I'm a huge fan of all that, but there's just something about the upper play field that really brings it all together and just seeing that shot, seeing everything whip around. So for me, that's just a lot of fun. And I think too, it's as the code matures more, I'm curious to see where that goes exactly. Cause I feel like there's a lot of other things in this game that we haven't quite scratched yeah. the surface with Yeah. in terms of figuring out, figuring out whether scoring or whether we're figuring out the fish finder targets a little bit more since they just now added a wizard mode associated mm -hmm. with that. So yeah, it's just taking time to wait for it. But I mean, overall I've got no complaints. I think it's, it's been selling great for mm -hmm. us. I mean, it's, it's hard to keep them in stock. Just a lot of people just enjoy the game overall and i think people are hearing about it more and more so it's i think it's going to be around for a pretty pretty significant time more than what people realize and and even if people are trying to compare it to godzilla and jurassic park it's like guys it's those are two all-time banger pins yeah you know compared to everything else so if this game's getting compared to those that's a good thing you know it's not like we're comparing it to something that might be like the 200th best pin ever made or something like that so no i'm happy with it overall i think i think it's really good and yeah i think people people will be pleased to keep playing it for a long time the premium is great if you have the le i'm super jealous yeah like what tom has behind him but yeah you can't go wrong <laughs> with the premium at all yeah um real quick i do i i think this is real but um uh from the three this of us real joel i think this is real from the three of us are not in train, a box um, hi, George Gomez. Thank you for listening to our <laughs> podcast. And the reason I say that is because apparently I was talking to Elizabeth Gieske. She works for Stern. She said after our last episode of, of Triple Drain, when Travis complained about the ball eating, the shark eating his ball and the ball getting stuck under the play field, 
She's like, I think George might listen to your podcast because 24 hours after your podcast came out, all of a sudden there was like a full group meeting on like, you need to fix this. And they did. <laughs> they they fixed it. So if if Gomez happens to listen to this podcast, then thanks. Thanks for listening. But apparently, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think she's giving you credit, Travis, for uh, for uh, pushing up that on the priority table. So look I'm at you I'm willing go. to bet they probably already thought about it. You know, I'm gonna, that's, I'm gonna, that could be true. I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that they know what they're doing there. That that could be valid. That could be valid. I was trying to give you something, but you know, whatever. If you no, don't I'm want an it. idiot, Joel. You know this. <laughs> hey, okay, you. let's let's quote the clip that real quick. And uh no. Um well cool. Okay, Jaws. Still a great game. Really looking forward to playing it more. Um Labyrinth. I know I've played the heck out of the game. Travis had you you had played Labyrinth at X Bar, remember that. Played it for a little while. Yep. Yeah, and that's the last game you beat me on. Mm-hmm. So I still remember that. Yep. I need to make sure it's TPF that too, did not happen again. <laughs> oh, he beat you too? Yeah. I had the GC on that game for or I don't know. It was it was there. Maybe it was GC, but it was it was good. Um Tom, have you you had played it at Expo or you played it at MGC or what? Uh I pl- I did not play it at MGC. Uh okay. I played it at Expo uh a little bit. And then uh, there is one at Lumberjack Johnny's. I've, I I haven't really played it that much. Do you know from a routing standpoint, is has it done well on route? Has it held up well on route? Do you know any information I, it, like it, that? From my understanding, it has not held up super well on route. Okay. Uh, Typically, they've been taking it out of some tournaments that we've had, so um, it's just had some small issues. Okay, but, interesting. Uh, yeah, it's nothing. Uh, I don't think anything like extravagant, but okay. uh, they they have um, almost the entire barrels of fun team was there. It was a joy talking to them. They had a seminar, and my one takeaway with them as a company is everybody that works there genuinely seems to love their job and it just seems like they're a very passionate organization they're working hard on the next few games but they're also working really hard to get the current games out and um it seems like customer service has been great responsiveness has been great so i know there's a lot of people waiting on their labyrinth you know enjoy it wait you know i think i think you'll get the game and i i don't know i'm excited for you i i it, it had lines the whole time um I did have an opportunity when I was there. They had the original Whitewood there. And to play a Whitewood, it was cool to see. You just don't realize how much art and inserts really do affect the game um, in a really positive way. But um, it was just, it was cool. It was really cool. And the new topper, the topper's awesome. There's um, Mark Silk did all the voices for the goblins in the topper. And apparently he he filmed, I think it was like 60 something scenes. So Ooh. depending on what's going on in the game, they react and talk and talk at you and react to what you're doing. So if you have the game, get the topper. The topper really was really, really neat. Carl over at IE Pinball is streaming oh. the heck out of it right now. And um, he's doing a really good job showing off the game. So still a great game. Um, I don't know. Tom, you going to buy one or no? You're still not. Uh, again, it's just not a theme I'm really interested in. Okay. So, but I might buy the next barrels of fun game. You never know. True. And that's my brother keeps telling me he he misses he misses Labyrinth a lot. And um I'm not I'm not planning on buying one just because once again it's not a theme I, I crave, but it was it was a really good game. Um but speaking have of games guys, have you guys seen the movie by I chance? Have. Yes. I have is, not. Is not it any yet, good no, after the first thirty minutes? <laughs> you should finish it. It's it's weird. It's just a weird movie. Um so why it, should I finish it? Because saying the, it's weird. That's because your, that's your it, things value start to make here. a little more sense. Uh, you can value you would you so there are things to appreciate. David Bowie Bulge is in the movie. I'm going to figure that part out. That's what you're saying. You know they don't go into detail on why. Okay. We just but, said things are going to make sense. So that's that was my only question. <laughs> there's the some there's movie. some conclusion to it. I don't know. I whatever. Waste your time how you want to. <laughs> you know if you if you want to watch. Uh, hey, I'll tell I'll tell my wife. Hey, we got to watch Labyrinth as Joel said. Nah. <laughs> There's going to be a conclusion to Go David watch, Bowie's uh, bulge on Money the last Ball half of the movie. The 15th time or whatever. Moneyball? I don't know. I just saw baseball. I'm, I'm in the middle of baseball. watching Mission Impossible. That's what I'm trying to watch right oh. now. You know, I, I saw a meme online and they're like, Mission Impossible 9, it sounds like these 
the missions are actually pretty possible at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought that was. I wonder I if Anyways. that would be a good theme for pinball Mission Impossible. No, nah, we got to do. We already have Fast and game. Furious, where no, they end up on the moon or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no. We already had cars. We got cars in. We've uh, never barbecue. landed on the moon, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of games that we are going to buy. Um, Travis is going to buy a a P3. He's going to buy a multimorphic game because Monica loves Princess Bride. He's going to do that. He he already lost the love and respect of his children. He doesn't want to lose the love and respect of his wife. So she wants Princess Bride. I think it's happening. We've made it close to 20 years. I'm over the hump. I don't have to do shit, Joel. (laughs) (laughs) So, but But she did love the game. She did. She did did love the game. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Talk about the game, Travis. You blew it up. I, I had a chance. I played it with uh, Dennis and Tony from Eclectic Gamers mm-hmm. Podcast. We stood in line and watched you play, um, and you blew it up. Colin was there explaining the rules. Um, yeah, Must go be for nice. it, Travis. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have a pinball caddy. Yeah. 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 No, uh, it, was, it was fun overall. I mean, it's... So, you know, we've talked about the P3 platform several times on this show, and I'm sure for those that have been with us for a couple of years. Everybody remembers our show from a couple of years ago in which Tom and I caught some arrows on some of our comments and Joel did his usual sit on the fence thing. So he, <laughs> he came through unscathed. But, you know, our, our big complaint has always been that everything's in the back third of the play field, right? Now, yeah. I know I've said this a bunch of times. I feel like it's perfectly valid to say that. So it is what it is. But I entered this game knowing that, okay, that's what's going to be. And for what it was, I think that they did the best that they possibly could with this theme, considering what the platform allows them to do. Yeah. If that makes sense. So I I feel like the rules were very well integrated into it with what Colin has done. It made a lot of sense. I didn't feel lost while playing the game. I think if you are a, if you're, I don't know how to word this, if you're an average player, I think you're going to enjoy the game a lot because the shots are wide open. Yeah. It, it didn't feel like the shots were overly di- difficult to do. And of course that obviously is most likely by design. That was the intention of it. I, the cliffs mech was actually pretty cool though. I did yeah. like that, how the ball got the magnetizer, whatever went up and you got to see it do its thing. That was pretty cool. It's just the only true downside that I could really think of that in the middle of playing, I was like, okay, it, it didn't feel like I needed to use this at all was the upper flippers. Because I found myself, it just felt so strange having to do two separate sets of flippers with that, that I ultimately just bailed out and I barely even used my upper flippers. But I did like how the platform allowed you during some of the scenes, one of the rules is to use the same side with your yeah, with one hand. Yeah, the sword that, fighting mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was interesting. I, and obviously it's been done before. I think American Pinball did it with uh, Oktoberfest. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it's it's not like this is brand new, but... It's something that's a little bit different. It was on point with the theme and it made sense. So things like that, I could appreciate on it. But yeah, I, I asked Monica on it because I'm not a huge Princess Bride fan, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not going to be able to judge it too much on the theme or anything like that. But I asked my wife, who's a massive fan, and she was just like, yeah, this is exactly what I would want out of a pinball machine in, in terms of just the overall vibe or, or the feel of everything that's going on with the call outs, the scenes, getting to see everything on there, you you know, you get to see something come to life. And Mm so I can respect that because somebody like her, unlike us three knuckleheads, you know, she's not jaded by the industry at all. You know, she's, she's off to the side and she just sees a theme that she likes. And I think there's a lot of people out there like that, that see this, that may not be viewing the game through the prism of, well, this has to have like an awesome layout, or Mm -hmm. this has to have just top tier rules that I can go super deep and get to these ultra wizard modes. I think a lot of people are just looking at it from the standpoint, does it have assets in the game? And does it feel like the theme that I remember when I was a kid? Yeah. And it, it, it seemed like according to her that checked all those boxes. So in that regard, multimorphic did a great job. So Tom, if your wife came to you and said, this pinball machine has everything that I want. She, in she's this not going to say that, but go ahead. But if she did, if she's like, I love this theme, <laughs> this, this pinball machine has everything I want in this game. I really like this game. Would you buy it? Or would you it, just if say, my wife was no. like, we need to get this pinball machine. I would get it. That's a good, that's really good of you. That's a I, good, 
That's a quality. She's got to have something, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to guilt me into buying this machine, Joel? I'm not Joel, saying ever? anything about you, Travis. You know, I have a Stern Pirates right over there yeah. that it, I spent an obscene amount of money for several years ago mm. that I should have never even spent it on it because my wife wanted that machine. So she gets one, is what you're saying. I have a bunch of EMs <laughs> over there that she wants to. <laughs> no, I don't. Hopefully I she doesn't it. listen to um, this. You're right. Okay. I would say, um, I think if you are currently a P3 owner, buy Princess Bride. You will enjoy the game. Yeah. I think your guests will enjoy the game. Um, it was inc It's incredibly well done. Um, they have so many movie clips, so many movie assets the 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 layout like the just watching the different modes the modes look unique i really like how the rules are set up where you get to kind of choose your mode so it's not crazy linear and getting bored um the ball watching, going up the cliff yeah the magnet it's there's some really really neat stuff and unique like watching travis play and he's in that sword fighting mode where um you know they're playing left hand or they're they're fighting they're only holding the sword with their left hand so like you you're controlling the whole game just on your left hand watching travis do a post pass with only his left hand, you know, between his pointer finger and his middle finger, it's like, okay, that was pretty cool. That was pretty impressive. And then all of a sudden, in the in the mode, they switch to the right he's hand. Pre so he's now pretty Travis, handy, Joel. Yeah, he's skilled. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Um, so, uh, I think, what? I mean, overall. Well? I'm just showing you my hands because Tom said he's pretty handy. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can play off this. this it was good. It, it was it good. It 50 episodes to get to this, yeah. you know. The, this hey, wouldn't sink that much. Travis, you want to you, try your Joel. joke again? You want to try it again real quick? Maybe the third time is better. You want to try it? No? Tom, do you have <laughs> the <laughs> beep on here? Do I have the one on this? I'm not going to cuss. I'm not going to cuss. So I told myself no more yeah. F-bombs yeah. for the year. Um, But I think <laughs> it's... it's you're testing I would, my soul. I would say... <laughs> I would say that... It's it's in a similar vein of Elton John. I think it's a really good theme. I think the game's really well done, but it comes back to price. If you don't have a P3, you're looking at a plus 10 grand machine to get it. And theme, is it a, is it a theme that is Princess Bride a theme that people love, like universally love and praise? I think people respect the movie, but do they respect the movie to the point where they want to pay over $10,000 for it in their basement? No. Maybe. So, maybe, maybe. Maybe is the right maybe. answer. But um I would say if you're a P3 owner or if you're really heavily debating it, like this may be the thing that pushes you over the edge. But if you currently own P3, you've got to be ecstatic. Like the game looks, it's it's a great theme. It's it's very, very well done. Um, so it I felt, played it. It felt a lot more approachable than Weird Al. Yes. That's, that's what yes. it felt like. It felt like one of the most approachable E3 games that they put out. I will completely agree with that. Weird Al, I've enjoyed Weird Al, but it, the complexity of the upper module, it's kind of like, wait, where are these shots going and what's going on? It's just for anybody to just step up and play, It's there's a lot more confusion there while this just made sense. Um, and so I really enjoyed it. I, I, would, I would put my top two um, P3 modules at Final Resistance and, and um, Princess Bride. I, Those I played, were the ones that were at MGC. Yeah, they're great games. And I think I think that now all of a sudden you look at it as like a combo. Do I want to pay? I think it's what, 10 something for I don't know exactly the price. But if I want to get in on the system plus a module and then add another, I think it's three grand for the other module. Like, am I prepared to drop fifteen thousand dollars for those two games? Um, I don't know. It's but I have price seen, of an Elton John. You're getting two games for the price of one, Joel. That's valid. And it only takes up the space of one. So that's true. You're I, getting I just, into some deep meta stuff right now. You're talking about <laughs> yeah. you're talking about a smaller pinball company that most of the people in the pinball industry or enthusiasts know about, but mm -hmm. then we already know that they don't want to spend more than ten thousand yeah. on a machine. The fear of like not getting their money back. That's that's well, the tough part. But hopefully they get it figured out. You that's know? what I was gonna say. I've seen oh. multiple posts recently on Pinsider Facebook where when you when you get out of your P3, you have you have to sell all of it. So you're selling, you know, now all of a sudden you're not selling a P3 at eight grand. You're selling a P3 plus the four modules you've bought. You know, you may be selling eighteen thousand dollars worth of stuff, but you're trying to market at twelve or thirteen just to move it. But you're still that's still thirteen thousand dollars. So here, here would be my recommendation: sell what you can to the person who's buying it, and sell the other modules for a discount to somebody else. If they don't, that's the 
Like if, if they I don't already P3, have it, you're oh, right. Yeah. But there, there's there's yeah. the, other people coming into the market, so true. they. It's just you the know, tough part is is they have to have a P3 already. You yeah. already have to be an adopter because there's not too many people that are just going to buy the module on its own. Well, and we already time, have to have electricity to have, <laughs> right? <laughs> and at the same time, yeah. too, it's just it's very difficult because I've tried to conceptualize this to brand new people into pinball that just come down to the basement or to my house and ask about it. I, I have a hard time conceptualizing what that product is for them to understand that they can remove the a large portion or if not the whole entire play field module up, up there, put yeah. it back down. And it just, to them, it sounds like a lot of work. So yeah. it's like, it's very difficult to, to get that through to people. And obviously that's a, a challenge that they've had to face down there but i would have to think that they're doing halfway decent considering that they've been in business now for what a decade or so and yeah. they're still putting out games so you know. they i i don't know i'm i'm impressed i'm impressed um i think the company is i it seems like the company is doing well i know they're sending about a, a, like almost these upgrade kits to a lot of their their owners i just i mean they're heading in the right direction but i'm still I mean, maybe one day, maybe by episode 75 or 100, one of us will finally have bought a P3 because we're like, okay, it just makes sense at this point. Here's a theme that I love. Red Hot Chili Peppers comes out on on a P3 and Travis can't say no. And then all of a sudden he owns multiple modules. I would be, yeah, I would be Trade absolutely Trade with your screwed. friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've heard about that. I've heard uh, Buffalo. Buffalo, the like I know Kevin owns one, but they have a few friends in the areas that also own them. So they have different modules. So they just swap modules. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can only have one yeah. module in your game at a time. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you two bozos are volunteering to get a P3 along with me so we can just trade. There we go. Over and over again, right? Yeah. Let's... Okay, Tom's in. There you go, Joel. I mean, That's the distance is one. a little far, yeah. but... <laughs> you just needed one. We're all um, in the Midwest. It's driving distance. So, okay. So... Well done. Well done on that. I think Princess Bride is... <laughs> Thank you. I've heard nothing but... Um, oh. I wasn't for you. You've you Shit, just... Tom. I thought no. he was saying well done to mm-hmm. you and I for that yeah, segment. I did too. Okay. Tom, you're doing a great job. Keep oh, doing thanks. what you thanks, do, man. Thanks, yep. Appreciate it. Um, what else we got? <laughs> Labyrinth to talk about. Okay, I'm going to let Tom talk here. Um, actually, we'll just start with this. Here we go. Let's... Uh, here we go. Tom talks. He's got something to say. Tom talks. He's got nothing to say. Tom talks. Tom it's true okay travis go um uh, go make a green tea or something you know we don't need you uh tom uh <laughs> you played texas chainsaw massacre at mgc and you liked it so i'm gonna shut I, up i just want to hear all the stuff really enjoyed playing that game i and it is a theme that is not up my alley let's put it that way but uh i i thought the shots and the layout uh, the layout was really cool. Um, I, I enjoyed the rules. I don't think I got like super deep into the game, but, uh, I think anybody getting a Texas chain chainsaw massacre is going to really enjoy it. Um, if you like that theme, uh, the, the layout and the rules are done really well and you will definitely enjoy it. So do you have one on order? Are you, you No, you, I don't like the theme. I'm not gonna okay. put that in my house. Did you play <laughs> did, did you play um and your wife doesn't want one, right? Just making uh, sure it's no, not a I game w- that would, has everything I, she wants. I wanted. would assume if it even okay. like came in the doorway, she'd be like, get that <laughs> get out. F out of here. Get it out of here. Uh did you play Looney Tunes? <laughs> uh I did. Not not quite as much though. Uh I, I only played a game on it. Okay, so layouts and everything's the same, but different yeah. different views, different thoughts on Looney Tunes. It, versus- it's a completely different game. I mean, even though the layout is the same, you know, it is uh, it is completely different uh, rule set. You know, they have different teams on the game, so mm-hmm. um, you know, different programmers, and uh, I believe the inserts are different, uh, like even a different layout. Yep. So. Uh, but, uh, no, I, 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 I went to that game more than any other of the new games at the show at at Midwest Midwest gaming classic. And you had a very strong, you had a very strong, uh, statement before we started recording. I I can't remember. I'm old. 
It said, uh, when do we replace Travis with somebody better? I think that was the I state. did no. not say no, that. He did. I thought Travis and I were talking about you, but no, 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 no. Uh, you said game of the show. You said game of the show was what? Uh, well, for me, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. I, I, I think thought that's... it was, I thought it was the best new game that I, you know, uh, outside of, you know, Jaws, which I've already yeah played, uh, Elton John and uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, Travis, do you have any uh, questions for Tom? Tom's talking really well. Thank you. I'm very proud of him. I tried. That was the a really excellent well segment. Nice job, Thanks. Tom. Tom talked. He had something to say. Tom talked. He had nothing to say. Tom talked. I got nothing. That just makes me happy. Um, Thanks. Yeah. So Travis and I, we played both. We played both at Texas. um, And we actually had Bug. We had Bug there, and he kind of explained the game while we played it, which was really, really neat. And um, I will say, um, I think it's probably uh, one of the best, if not the best, shooting spooky game that they've made. Um, The layout is fun and unique. Um, I was impressed by the code, though on on texas chainsaw massacre and and the reason being there was there was a mode that travis got to where it's like i think he had completed all the is jerry the right one i don't know he re, he completed all the the major modes of one character and he got to the, like this little mini wizard mode and oh was, you're talking about the blood mode yeah or whatever and yeah yeah this mode i just thought was brilliant but it's um it's the the, the you had to shoot a bunch of shots and then he hits the scoop or he hits something, and then the whole, all the inserts on the game turn red. So apparently the play field's filled up with blood. So what that means is every switch that's red counts. But the more you do it, because you're draining the blood out of the victim, the, the shots slowly turn white as they move closer and closer to the flipper. So now all of a sudden your back shots don't count anymore. They're worthless. So you are adjusting all the way to the point where only the slings are lit. So imagine just using your flippers to try to hit your slings and to watch Travis play this and like understand how the, the mode is changing based on that. I just thought that was really clever. So that was just one. And to see how jazzed and pumped up bug was to explain it. Um, I think the, the overall theme integration of that game is really impressive. Um, yeah, Travis, what did you think? You played it. You were playing it really yeah, well. I, so I would put it this way. I, Go into TPF again, not a huge ECM fan, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Looney Tunes. I did grow up on, so I was mm-hmm. like, okay, that, that's the one I'm going to gravitate towards. I found myself though enjoying my time a lot more on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that's I was, what I did. Yeah, yeah, I was shocked by that too. It, <laughs> and it wasn't for, I, I don't know why that is exactly. Um, I do know in terms of Looney Tunes, I, I don't know, just maybe it's just the presentation, the sound package, the the rules on it. It wasn't something that I was really drawn to personally. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre just felt like it had a little bit more interesting things or ideas behind it in terms of what the theme is, how it's integrated, how the rules are, so on and so forth. So those are the parts of it that I could really appreciate. The layout is very interesting because it's it was challenging, but then at the same time, it was like there was parts of it that was really fun to do then some parts of it that was kind of frustrating yeah and i don't know if that's because of the copy the particular copy and so i want to play it more and just play different versions of it and find out but just to give an example of this the upper left ramp i found myself rattling that a lot more than what i would want to right but the left ramp was just fine the upper right ramp just fine the right ramp just fine so there was certain shots that were that worked really well. Um, outside of that, I think I had some issues with the upper left flipper that's kind of hidden behind the left ramp mm-hmm. in a way. And I figured this out by playing, I think it was Looney Tunes with one of my sons that he and a couple other people that were basically around like five four, five five, they didn't even realize there was a flipper there the whole entire time. So I'm curious to see can't how- see it. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and I, I bent down and yeah, it's one of those things that until you know, it's there, 
You know, and, and it makes sense because you see a lot of people play games with an upper flipper that's in plain view, but they never use it because they don't think about it. You know, so I've seen that plenty of times as well. But something like that, I even found myself, and I'm just a little over six foot, I found myself having a hard time really timing that shot overall. Mm-hmm. But once you do figure it out, it does whip around there pretty cool. And, you know, the figure eight that it does is pretty neat. And outside of that, I think my only other complaint that I might have is maybe the left orbit return. It's just, it's really blocked off that when the ball comes back through that spinner, because you have the wire form that's right above it. You have, I guess, just that big mech that's there at the side. That's like the the meat grinder. Yeah. 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 That kind of partially hangs over it. So just depending on how tall you are, again, mileage may vary, but these are just like layout gripes sure. with that. Over, overall, I would say that this is probably the most fun spooky I played of anything. And I thoroughly enjoyed Rick and Morty, yeah. what it was. And I enjoy TNA. But in terms of just something that's just radically different than what's out there from anyone else, it's just, yeah, they took a chance on just a pure horror theme that just leans completely into it. They, oh, yeah. you know, it is unapologetic. They, it's gross. They, yeah, they, <laughs> they go gross, all the way. Yeah. So I can respect that. They're leaning into exactly what they want to do. And they, it didn't seem like that they cut any corners Mm-mm. with that. So yeah, it's not a game that I would bring into my house just because I do have young kids and everything. But I would think again, if, How if did I your was kids a, like the game. So it's funny. My, I have two teenage boys that were there and they gravitated more towards Looney Tunes more than anything. And they don't even watch cartoons. So I, I haven't asked them why that is or whatever, but they, they went back to play it several times. So I think it might've just been the whole thing that just seeing a guy with a chainsaw spin around, they were just like, uh, we, we just don't want to see that. So, but no, overall they, they had fun with the game. And so that's the most important thing. You're kind of, if a kid can have fun with the Looney Tunes layout, then that means they're probably going to go pretty good ways with that. And I think it's just, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting layout. I still find it very fascinating that they're doing the two different themes with it, which I think can work, but it also puts us in a unique spot to where we are judging two pretty similar games to each other. And I think in this case, it was almost as if Texas Chainsaw was just clearly a superior game. And it's just, I was not expecting that for me. Uh, It just, it just felt like that to me. I think from a code standpoint, Texas Chainsaw Massacre seems like there's a lot more there at the moment. I don't know what percent, you know, I don't know code numbers. It just seems like, right. and I talking to bug, there was, there was a point where Texas Chainsaw Massacre did crash. It didn't crash, but like I we hit a shot. We, yeah, we locked yeah. it up a little so bit. That's okay. I think Ben Early Heck, code. I think Ben Heck has put a ton into the game but a lot of it still needs finesse, tweaked, all that stuff. While Looney Tunes may not have as much in the game at the moment, but it did seem, I don't know. I, I just think it's, I just think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is further along than Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes playing it. Um, yeah, it just felt more accessible. Um, all the modes, like there's no timers in any of the modes right now. So it's just survive and hit the shots and experience the game. So I, I just think it's, I mean, maybe that's, that'll always be that way, but I could understand why novice players or kids or even maybe average players might be drawn more towards Looney Tunes because it's a lot more accessible in that way. Um, my one gripe with both of them, and I know, Travis, you've already made mention of, it could be the model, it could be, or that particular unit, or it could be expo power, things feeling underpowered. Um, the hook multi-ball the the hook lock mech it's the mech in the back of both of the games um both of them do it in a slightly different way but both of them you have to hit the captive ball and so i think it's in texas chainsaw massacre you you like hit the captive ball and you can lock a ball and then you have to hit the captive ball and you lock a ball while looney tunes you have to hit the captive ball i think it's like four or five times and once you've done that then you can lock all three balls i could not ever experienced that mech and it and it wasn't and it was because of the captive ball there was pl- I, i've played a lot of games that have captive balls some of them you have to drill you know i know even like on avengers an avengers pro you can barely graze that captive ball and the ball moves just barely and it'll register as a hit while like on a premium you have to 
nail the thing because it's got to move way further back to register a hit. This, the way that the ball, it's not flat. It's like, it, it's almost like it's pushing the other ball up. And there were times where I was drilling it like head on, just bang, and it didn't register a hit. And I don't know if that's a mechanical issue, a code issue, whatever it was, but I found myself getting to the point where it's like, that's all I'm trying to do. And so I'm spending three balls, a whole game, <laughs> just bashing or trying to bash a captive ball and to feel like it wasn't registering or, or you didn't hit it clean enough. It's just, that's the one area of the game, the one little mech that I, I, I hope they can address or tweak in a way. Um, because yeah, when you feel like there's a, a mechanical roadblock to experience something in the game, especially something as critical as a multi-ball. Um, but I've seen, I've seen bug stream the game multiple times and he obviously knows the layout. He knows how to hit it. He can flow. Boom, boom, boom. You can combo so many shots. So for people that get these in their house and learn the game, they're going to know where the upper flipper is. They're going to know how to shoot it. Um, so if you're a huge Looney Tunes fan, a huge Texas Chainsaw fan, I think you're, you guys are going to enjoy the game, but those are my only complaints. I think there's still a ways to go with the code and the captive ball. But, um, I would say if you're on the fence between either one, I would personally, and you can get either one into your house, I would go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I say that as a Looney Tunes fan. Yeah. Like it just, it just felt like the more complete package at this point. And a lot of stuff made sense too. When Leatherface starts spinning around in circles, like I got that. When Taz starts spinning around, I was just like, I wanted to poke him, tell him to go faster. I was, you know, <laughs> He's just, looking for his keys. He's like, right, where are they? Right? Where are they? He's not, yeah. <laughs> He's no. gotten old too. He's slowed down with age, obviously. Yeah. It's what it is. But still good. I mean, just, just to review, like we all loved Elton John. We all loved or have really enjoyed Labyrinth. We've all really enjoyed those games. Like it wasn't a... There wasn't a clear cut stinker or anything. I mean, it just Jaws was. We all I mean, have Jaws. I'll, I'll be upfront. I enjoyed Texas Chainsaw Massacre more than Labyrinth, personally. Okay. And so just, does Tom. Just, okay. just from the <laughs> shots perspective yeah. and from what it was, you know, it, it's like anything else. If we look at pinball through the prism of wanting to have fun, you can find fun anyway. Oh, yeah. And if we approach it, you know, from the standpoint, well, we're going to be grumpy and just pick it apart. Yeah, we could do that too. We could do that to anything. But overall, from a fun standpoint, I did find myself going back and playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre a couple of times during the weekend. So and I can't say the same for several other games. Yeah, so. let's find some fun, Travis. Let's find some fun in the next game, which is <laughs> Barrio's Barbecue Challenge. Um, did you, where was the fun? Did you find the fun? <sighs> I played it five times. Five times. I did play it five times because I wanted to give the game an honest chance. Like I made my decision when I went to TPF, all the games, I was going to give them an honest shot. Mm -hmm. Right? So what the struggle with Barbecue Challenge for me personally, whenever I was playing it, the first couple of copies I played, the ball would not get up all the way to the, the left ramp. I was Can't. having yep. pure PTSD of Raza back at Houston Expo in 2019. I like I remember missing that ramp or not completing that ramp 40 plus times. And I was just transferred all the way back there again when I was playing my first barbecue challenge game. And I the flippers just felt underpowered. So I went ahead. I waited in line for the one next to it. I wanted to try a different copy. The same thing happened again. I was like, oh, crap. What is going on? And so I ended up not playing for the rest of the day, but I went back and I found another copy elsewhere. And unfortunately this one, the flippers weren't aligned, but you could make a ramp though. Yeah. So I got to experience that, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I talked to several people that actually really, really enjoyed the game, thoroughly enjoyed, but these are players that they're not new to pinball. They've been in pinball for over a decade. They're into all the weird stuff that mm -hmm. you could think of, right? All the weird 70s and 80s layouts and games. That's, that's where their bread and butter's at. So this game spoke to them because it's kind of like, like we talked about before, it's almost like a space shuttle, a modern space shuttle game with the way the locks are and yep. releasing and everything. So a lot of them appreciate that. Now, the people that I talk to that are newer to pinball and they fall under like two, three years or got into it during COVID, that they were not responding well to this game at all for various reasons. The num number one overwhelming reason was the theme. Like none of them could understand the theme. So they were all I, vegetarian, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so from vegan. a gameplay, vegan. yeah, vegan. <laughs> yeah. From a gameplay standpoint, I really did like the locks. Yes, that I enjoyed. Yes, I, I like the idea of locking a ball immediately and then doing something to to bring it back out. Like I like those old school callbacks. I wasn't a fan of the ramps in terms of the way that they were implemented with the game, with the spinners where they were. I was finding myself I could not loop the ramps. Like it would just if I was going to make a ramp, it would just barely make it up there. And a large part of that was just getting caught up in the spinner. And even if I got on a copy to where I could loop the left ramp over and over again, after maybe three ramps in a row, it would start to lose its power. So I, I don't know. I, I still want to give the game a shot, but there just there wasn't enough there to really, really pull me in. And I was left wondering, I told you guys this. I think I told you this, Joel, when we were down there. I know I t- talked about this on our, on our chat, but I just couldn't help but think while I was playing this, I just couldn't imagine what would have happened if this game was a Bucky's or something like that, if that was the theme. Right. If they wanted to get it to different places and get it out there outside of the pinball industry, I just feel like there was just so many other options they could go to besides McDonald's. Bar- yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I mean, there is a Domino's pin out there. Yeah, I mean, it, it can brand happen. It, brand it yeah. something. Well, yeah. I can. Yeah. I can tell you straight up. Like, even like we, we had Jetsons that came out a few years ago. And I can mm-hmm. tell you straight up, every single one sold. So, it's just like you you can get these games to the right people yeah. if that's your goal, but I just don't know who this goes to. That's the tough part. Like, how do you get somebody this day and age in 2024 to pay attention to this game on location? How do you convince somebody to bring this in to their house when they have Looney Tunes, Labyrinth, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Jaws, Pulp Fiction? I mean, and what else is there? There's there's all this other Princess Bride. There's all these other games out there. So it's just yeah. kind of like. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just tough, but Tom, have you got a chance to play it? Barbecue challenge? Yeah. Did you I've, accept the challenge? <laughs> I, I played maybe two games on it. Um, at MGC. Could you hit the ramps? Yeah, I could hit the ramps. Okay. Um, I had a, I had a decent game going on at, uh, my first game. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of laughed at, you know, they're slicing brisket and stuff. And I was just like, <laughs> okay. Um, somebody was talking about how they like, I, I might've been on, on TPS, um, where squirt squirting the barbecue sauce. Yep. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, I thought the game shot well, it, it's just not, I, I guess I just don't get the whole theme and concept of it. You know, I, I, yeah, to me, I'm wondering, you know, like there's characters on the play field. It looks like, like, are they somehow involved in this? You know, I, I don't know. The brisket brothers burn in bros or something. There's it just, yeah. it very much feels like a theme that should have came out 25, 30 years ago. That way we don't need an LCD to explain it or right. something like that. It's just like diner, you know, you could accept right. what diner it is or imagine if, Frontier came out today. You needed an LCD to just show it. Right. So, you just showed the crickets and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, some rugged mountain dude yeah. just walking along. It's just, yeah. That, you know, with a close themes, up and he comes in. Right. So it's to... not like the theme is, yeah. <laughs> it's not like the theme is beyond pinball at all. It's just that, yeah. is that a theme that resonates in 2024 and using it on a modern pinball machine with the LCD screen and the LEDs and, and all that. That's the part that was just a little jarring because we haven't seen that very often. I, I can't think of any other game really in recent memory that just took just a bizarre left field theme that feels like it's straight out of the 80s or early 90s. Right. I mean, right. So, TNA is the only thing I can think of of just a it's out there theme this futuristic. Well, yeah, we know, know but we know then, American you know, does original but, themes, right? I mean, yeah. right. except for you know maybe Hot Wheels, but like Hot Wheels is my favorite game of theirs. Okay, so I I don't know. Yeah i I played the heck out of it, and the reason I played the heck out of it is because there was there was like no line. There was never a line for for uh, that. At least maybe it would be like a one person deep line. So if I'm walking around and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be here for three days. I want to make sure I can play the games that I don't normally get to play. I'm trying to put time in on 
you know, the games I haven't streamed, the new stuff. Barbecue Challenge, I played it multiple, multiple times, and I struggled to hit the ramps. And then to add insult to injury, there's spinners on the ramps. So it's like I can't even complete the ramp. So I'm not getting any spins. You know, there's no power up there where the spinner is. It's it's just dead. So, you know, I don't know if that's you, if it was expo power. I don't know if you can turn up the flippers, <laughs> maybe get some precision flippers. See, I don't I know. Didn't, something I didn't to find get some that more power I, on those ramps. I didn't find that at Midwest Gaming Classic. I felt like I could hit the ramps. Well, hopefully that's the case because the rest of it, um, the pop bumpers were cool. They did some cool stuff with the lights and the pop bumpers. I did like the locks a lot. I did like the locks the yep. way you could lock the ball, choose when you start your multi ball. You can bash the balls when they're in the lock to do some stuff. I also really like the LCD screen in the play field. It's so helpful to know what's going on by not having to look all the way up. Um, so there are some things that I find redeemable or some things that I did really in, like that I did like about the game. But um, no, it's not a game. It's not a game I'd own. And, um, you know, I have, I, I know people in the hobby that are used to buying everything to try it out, but it's just, that's, that's asking a little too much to, to buy a barbecue game to put in their basement, especially if they only plan on having it for a few months. Um, so it's just, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know where I'm going to see it ever. Um, I think Steve Bowden listening to him, um, on the loser kid pinball podcast, uh, explain the rules. He's, he's done some really unique and creative stuff. So I think from a tournament standpoint, that game could probably be pretty awesome, but uh, who's gonna, I mean, let's district 82 gets one. I don't know many bars like lumberjack Johnny's. Yeah, they going to get a barbecue Eric challenge. Doesn't, Eric doesn't like, buy a lot of new, like uh, the newer games. He usually buys them used. So, so, so uh, I, yeah, I it's can't gonna see be tough for locations one. to adopt this. I think if you do see it out, you're gonna see it at pinball co-ops or something like that. Like people yeah. that just thoroughly enjoy off the wall themes and off the wall games. I think that's really who it would speak to. Because honestly, like if you think about this from a business standpoint, if you are running a route and you have dolls, a foo fighters, something like that. Like what, how much money is barbecue challenge really going to make long term? Yeah. After you get over that initial one to two week honeymoon, that's the, yeah. that's the scary part about Ex it. So, yeah. Especially when there's so many other pins available right now in similar price ranges with really big themes. Um, yeah, which we'll let's, we could talk about that, but just to wrap up, um, Texas, I, I think that was all the new games. Uh, Turner pinball was there. We did, I did play Ninja, uh, Eclipse, um, the cabinet. I think they've made a good step in the right direction. The cabinet now looks like a pinball machine. It acts like a pinball machine. Um, it still is a unlicensed theme. I think the art is probably the best part of the game. I think the art is actually really impressive. Um, there were people, I talked to a, a, a guy who's a fan of the show that he, he's going to buy one. He's, he's in, he's bought a lot of games and he's like, I want to support him. I want to give it a shot. Um, the talking to one of the guys there, I mean, they've done a lot with the rules. Um, it's just, it, to me, it always comes back to for that same amount of money that I could be handing Turner pinball. There's a lot of other really good games that are new and available that I, that I would prefer over, um, Ninja clips. Uh, it was at MGC. Did you play it, Tom? Did you have a chance to play? I did. I actually played it the last two minutes of the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and then the power went out cause the show was off. <laughs> but I was able to start the multi ball. Yeah. Uh I thought the uh I I thought the layout was fine, honestly. Yeah. Um I thought the scoop thing was a little different. The you right know, scoop ejects into the left into scoop. Into the left scoop and then ejects out. it up the play field. Yeah. And it's a, I guess it's a cool effect, but I was just like, eh. You know, like it was it's a little different. Um but uh Oh, I mean, I, you know, for the couple minutes I played, it was enjoyable, I guess. Yeah, I, I think I would just say just real short about Turner Pinball. They, they came out, they obviously had some, um, to be associated with, um, the deep root stuff. You know, they've tried to separate themselves from that. Their initial white wood that we played at TPF last year was not great. Um, and then they tried to revolutionize the cabinet and try to do some crazy stuff at expo last year. And it was like, don't do this, but I will say props to them for listening 
They've listened to feedback. They've improved the all the areas that people solid. have complained about. Yes. The cabinet was solid. They so it's like as a company, good. I'm glad you're you're heading in the right direction. You know, I hope they sell. I hope they sell enough of these to be profitable for them and they can learn from all this and and move on to the next, you know, maybe they can get a theme, uh, a license theme or something and and do even better with the second one, but um I I just that's one of those things where it's kind of a good on them, good on them for, for listening and, and heading in the right direction. Um, other games we played, there was a lot of homebrew games. So uh, shout out to Glenn. We played Jaws. I know him and his buddies, uh, not Jaws. Um, wow. Saw close. Um, we played <laughs> Saw. Um, that was Swear a whirlwind off. retheme to the Saw movies. And it was very well done. Glenn did all the audio. We played a song of his at the end of last episode. That was really cool to play. Um, there's a Friday th- the 13th game there that was really cool to play. Um, eight ball beyond was there. Uh, there's some, some of the homebrew games are really have really gotten impressive with how polished they are and how really they seem like a legitimate, you know, game. Um, so that was a lot of fun, but I don't, I would say my overall experience expo was awesome. Uh, or uh, Texas pinball festival was awesome. It was really, really cool playing all the games, talking to the different manufacturers, talking to the fans that were there. Um, I will gladly go again next year. And um, even hanging out with Travis was nice. So that's was, nice. Yeah. yeah Tom, I mean, are you going to commit the next year? We missed Tom. We did. Miss I, Tom. I don't know. It's just, it'll all depend. I mean, the hard the thing was I had I, all I, fence sitters. The Everybody hard thing is, is spring break. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. Spring break. And this year, all my kids will have a different week of spring break. Mm. What about next year? That's, That's next said. year. Yeah. Oh, you're calling <laughs> this year next year already? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Not okay. last year. I'm with you. Yeah. Spring break this year is right. over. So now I'm just it's, it's uh, past. So, it's already happened. Yes. So idea, right? Uh-oh. Okay. How about you just forget about them and just come down anyway? <laughs> uh, uh, I do enjoy being married to my wife. So I... Mm. He doesn't right, want another the kids. idea. Yeah, another idea, and, and she does let me do other things. I guess. I mean, Monica's going to be there. Well, I like oh, bring Monica. your wife. Have plenty bring to my do. Wife. Yeah. Hey, yeah. We can oh. plenty to she do. Can see. She might find a pinball machine that she really wants. Tom. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that'll be the case. Yeah. <laughs> what pinball machine do you think your wife would want? Like, what <laughs> one pinball machine? I don't know. Got to be a theme out there. Ben Affleck. I don't. know. <laughs> <laughs> The Ben Affleck, <laughs> ben Affleck the pinball machine. Uh, I have no idea. I do awesome. want to talk about uh, Midwest Gaming Classic a little bit. Go for okay. it. Yeah, I don't. So, I've never been. So you know, it's definitely not a pinball show, but it has a lot of pinball involved with it. But okay. it's a all encompassing game show. So if there's anything gaming you can think of, it'll be at that show. Uh, you're talking video games, arcade games, uh, board games. Uh, there's actually wrestling there. They <laughs> have a wrestling ring in the vendor hall nice. and they put on shows. Um, there's, there's just a lot going on. And, uh, I have never seen so many people at a show at any show than I have oh. this one. Uh, as, as far as like a, a pinball show or an arcade show, yeah. I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. I, 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 I was, uh, helping Rachel Risto, um, put on the tournament this year and she did it last year too, but she put on the tournament for Midwest gaming classic and I was helping out and, I, it, it was amazing to me how many people came up and asked if they could play the pinball machines. And I'm (laughs) like, well, you know, there's like over like 200 in the like gaming hall. And they were like, there's a gaming hall. I mean, that, that's just how big this show is. And, uh, so, so of course I pointed them in the right direction, but it, it, it was just amazing to me how many people were there. I must have had a hundred people come up to me while I was working the 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 desk. That's uh, awesome. I, asking. Yeah. I've always in my mind thought of MGC being a smaller 
pinball show, just like Louisville Arcade Expo, Cincinnati, Klee Pin. I just thought it was one of those, but I I never actually thought that. No, like the pinball part of it is a very small part of a very large show. Yep. So that's and actually. All, I mean, all know. the yeah. manufacturers were were there, or at least represented. So yeah. there were, you know, Marco had had the big Stern booth. Tilt Amusements was there with. Uh, uh they're uh they kind of had a stern booth or or they did have a stern booth mm-hmm. um spooky was there uh uh american pinball was there obviously uh and then turner pinball uh p3 and then uh you know kingpin uh who's a big wisconsin distributor you know had a bunch of stuff had had uh pulp fictions there I mean, it, 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 it's an amazing show. The The coolest thing he had, uh, Kingpin had from Raw Thrills, uh, a Godzilla VR. Have you ever seen that? Oh, wow. No, no. Yeah. There was a huge line to go play that. It was pretty awesome. But the the thing, I don't know how all shows operate, but one of the coolest things about Midwest gaming classic is if you work the show as a volunteer, uh, or you're a vendor, uh, they, they open up the hall at eight o'clock on Saturday to just those people. Oh, nice. Yeah. So like there's less crowds and you just get to enjoy the stuff. So, um, but, uh, I played that Godzilla VR and it's, it's pretty amazing. That's awesome. Not, well, good. Yeah. Now I we can not... get back to pinball. No, I clearly, um, <laughs> clearly, I did this at the wrong time. Time talk. He had something to say. Time talk. He had nothing to say. Time talk. Time talk. I got, I got nothing. Well done. Thank well you. done. Thank no, you. that's actually really cool. That's a solid endorsement. I, I think I got to um, give my five minutes on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh well we got a few minutes left here um uh one thing we should probably talk about i don't have it in our notes but um there was a new game announced uh it's called abba abba we got multiple emails apparently we've all been saying it wrong i kept saying abba last it's It's abba ABBA. like abacus abacus i got emails from two europeans and one australian saying uh saying that we did it wrong so abba um abba was announced um uh tom you have one right you're getting one on order no 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 travis you buying one no 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 okay. <laughs> um it'll sell just fine though oh yeah it's like a, yeah it's, it's gonna do the same thing queen did the, the one thing i've noticed completely that somehow a big portion of people on pin side and on facebook don't realize there's this other continent called europe Mm. that plays pinball also amazing i was there too and so were you (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's just like they always forget about that they see these themes and they're just like oh no never sell or you know i don't understand this i don't understand that but it's you know these themes are huge over there and they sell very well over there there's a reason why these games keep coming out you know somebody's buying them what's the um i don't have the page pulled up because i'm not a professional podcaster, but um, what uh, pricing <laughs> the cheapest version of ABBA because ABBA, ABBA, I'm I think you said it, it wrong. ABBA, it's ABBA, the cheapest it's version ABBA. of ABBA, ABBA, no, it's ABBA. abacus, abacus. That was What's the, an abacus? Why, why are we saying of this? Of course, you don't, I don't know what that, that is. You don't know what an abacus it. is, it deals with math. Uh, what it's only a thousand dollars on flipping out pinball joel it deals with math is that the thing you play with when you go to the dentist office yeah, yeah. when you're like <laughs> dentist yeah tom probably has 15 <laughs> of them tom it's, have like 10 of those <laughs> out there uh, ah. <laughs> no I, i'm just trying to you know we talked a lot about elton john earlier and like i right. would put abba in the same realm as elton john like it's a it's a theme a lot of people know abba songs but is it something is it's very loud is it something that they want in their house but yeah, if pricing is similar Joel, to Elton John, Joel, it's going to be in, yes. Joel, yeah, you asked a question. I'm ready for the answer. The, <laughs> the Voyage Edition is limited to 300 units, mm-hmm. and it is ten thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars plus grand. shipping. Plus ship, so it's going to be comparable with shipping I'm and everything. I'm flipping out pinball. Okay. 
but is so we're close to an Elton John. I just feel like all you know, we've said Elton John shoots well, the music is great, the animation is great, everything's great. Yeah. But people aren't buying them because it's twelve thousand dollars and it's a theme they know, but they're not loving. I feel like ABBA falls in the exact same category. Hey, if this was Rush, I would well. be all in on it. Okay. Okay. If you are an ABBA, <laughs> if you're an ABBA fan, I think they've done it well. The art, the sound. There's 16 songs. The layout. I was looking at it at flipping out with friends the other night, and the layout looks interesting. My one complaint is the upper flipper. There's only a handful of shots that utilize the upper flipper. And it looks like there's an inner loop, but I don't think it actually loops. I think it does the Led Zeppelin thing. I think it goes up and hits a stand up and then drops down in the pops. And the fact that that's not a loop, uh, that's a bummer. That's a bummer to me. Um, don't you have but, to like gather their souls or something like that? I, I don't, I don't know. I there's, don't know. There's, um, there's something strange going on with the rolls, Joel. Zach is trying to get one. <laughs> Apparently they're going to be manufactured in May. <laughs> Zach is going to try to get, get one so I can stream it. So I might be playing the heck out of it and I'm okay with that. Um, uh, so I, it just, yeah, it comes out. If you're an ABBA fan, you're probably excited with what you're seeing, but as a non ABBA person, this doesn't, I mean, it's like, man, whatever. Is yeah, that is that legit what's happening in this game? You collect souls? Yeah. Yeah. You have to, it says here. I know nothing there's about three this main or Is this like the lore? I don't know. Okay, there's three. <laughs> sorry, Tom, go ahead. There's three Creating main their avatars, avatars requires yeah. you to gather, <laughs> gather three main elements, the band members' instruments, outfits, mm. and their souls. <laughs> <laughs> In that order. In that order. In that order. <laughs> we can get away with no, the instrument I, the outfit, but yep. <laughs> yeah, that's you gotta you gotta yeah, get their the souls. Avatar. I mean, they leaned in. If you look at the art package, it is it is trippy. It is I mean, it just seems like they are they're leaning into this being ridiculous. And is that is that part of the, the lore though of the band? The avatar? I don't know. Avatar and collecting soul. Like, is this like an Eddie thing? Like it was for Iron Maiden? I, or? I think so. Like okay. they're, they're trying to, you know, instead of just make it a <sighs> listener, band, if you're a band if, game, they're making if you it are, a, if you are a diehard ABBA fan as a listener, and there's lore here that we need to learn, please email us at triple drain at gmail.com <laughs> with links. We'll cover it on the next episode. Sure. So that the entire listener population can be educated on app i got i got us covered hang on i'm oh, on your chat gpt right now you're gonna google it i mean oh, there's that's right. uh you're talking to your ai friend i mean they got all their popular popular songs dancing queen water sos yeah uh take a chance on me mama me. mia knowing me. Like over, you she went over these songs with me i have no idea what any of these so songs are you, you, it's not right travis rap. get out a little bit will you <laughs> <laughs> okay. go touch some grass okay you know? i i just okay, go in your I car think, put on the disco music uh, the cops might accidentally show up to my house according to what chat gpt just threw back at me <laughs> so i asked him okay is it abba or abba let's get this straight it's abba abba okay a B B A, right? Abacus. You don't okay. know what it is. Abacus. Okay. You don't so know. I said, does ABBA have collecting souls as part of their theme or whatever, right? <laughs> and Chat GPT, which is never wrong, never tells me that it seems like you might be referring to something metaphorical or symbolic related to ABBA. 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 Shit. <laughs> ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> the literal idea of collecting <laughs> souls doesn't apply to them. I don't know what's, you know, why is this so They're confusing? famous for their catchy pop music and have captivated audiences worldwide with their songs. Captivated. Captivated. So what does collecting souls have to do with like, to who came up avatar, with that? To complete the avatar, you know? Do we have to spell it out for you? Is this like the Foobot? But for... <laughs> I don't know, Travis. Okay, I don't I'm know. sorry. I just machine. got so many questions. Yeah. I know we're These in the middle of podcast. These people had to sell guys... their souls to get the license and... Mm. You Joel, gotta you don't know? forget the outfit, though. You got to get the outfit, too. I'm so lost. You know how this goes, Joel. If Tom says something that breaks my brain, <laughs> I need answers. And we go down this rabbit hole that lasts an hour. Now I'm just Elton John, confused. you have to collect outfits. That makes sense, though. That's on theme, right? Well, I they, think, they, I think they've, had some, they've had some outfits. 
Yeah. There's a lot of white one jumpsuits. It's going to be great. I don't know. It's coming out. Unfortunately, um, the video that's out there right now is really poor. There's very little video of gameplay. Hey, Hopefully that's somebody... Best, that's the best reveal of all time. I, know. I don't know what you're talking about. Hopefully somebody streams it so we can actually have a better understanding of what's going on in the game um, sooner than later. Um, so it's kind of a wait and see situation on that, but it's out. Wait, so if you... Yeah, if you're a... Uh, if you're an ABBA fan, uh, you know, I think it could be a good game. Yeah, it has it has a it has a shot. The layout it's got a shot. The layout doesn't look terrible. The art nope. is entertaining. It. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, There's a disco ball in it, Joel. It sure is. Yeah. Uh, what do we got? Uh, other things to mention real quick. Uh, I, I'll keep it short, but. Zach thanks, has let me thanks, borrow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Zach and Flip It Out has let me borrow a uh, Star Wars premium. And all I can say is now that I've had it in my initial impression of Star Wars, every time I've played it on location is the game sucks. It, 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 <sighs> I, and the reason I say that is, is cause it's brutal. You Sorry, plunge, Dwight. You plunge, it hits the, it hits the targets. It's out. You plunge, it's out. It's like, I just feel like I could never play the game. And it's like, Dwight did all the code. I want to, I know there's a ton of really good code here, but I can't experience he any can't of it. He can't help that. Because the layout was brutal. So now, now that I've had it in my collection. I mean, he could code in a ball save. He did. So now that I've had it in my collection, like the Tatooine shot on the far right, it's a scoop. By default, that could kick it out and just straight down the middle. But now there's a ball save. So I turn that on. There That's you go. not going to be on, yeah. on location. You know, there's little things like that that I, I out. I helped. I helped myself. I made the the made the game a this little game's more so accessible. Easy. I could play forever. Still not easy. There are definitely no. the horseshoe shot can be brutal. The Death Star shot you have to hit it clean because of the up ramp. And then what sucks is if you if you get into a Death Star mode, it dribbles the ball back down. But I have problems where that goes straight down the middle, so you got to be ready for it. Like it keeps you on your toes. Um, so with all that said. I actually now really enjoy the game. I, I actually have found a, a huge appreciation for the game, mainly because of the Dwight code. Now that I can play it and experience it more, there is a ton to do in that game. I love that you can tackle it from different people. You can go down completely different paths, completely different directions. There's a ton to do. I think I've completed almost everything in the game, not all in one game, but it is something where it's like, okay, now that I see that I can complete this, I can complete that, doom, boom, 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 boom. Like in a perfect world, you put it all together, you're going to beat it. Now, um, if you actually look like Star Wars Pinball, Travis on his old channel actually has a stream where you've beat the game. It's on YouTube and it shows Travis doing it. Um, what really? channel? I don't remember what it was under, Travis, but you streamed the game, you beat it. <laughs> what channel yep. was that? Is it Marv Loco? Marv Loco, Marv -Loco? Yeah, okay. yeah. I haven't posted on there in a couple of years though. Yep. But um, I don't know. I would just say if it's, I get that Star Wars is arguably one of, if not maybe the best license ever. And so the layout sells a lot toys, of units, Joel. From what I hear, it sells really, really well. And I and I just feel like they yes. could have done more with the layout or the toys or the mechs in the game. There's sure. the fact there's no That's magnets fair. in the game, you know, and it's Star Wars: The Force. I think that could have been better, but. The code, I think, I think Dwight crushed it. Yeah, uh, it the still lighting sells units. It, still moves units. Yeah, that's fair. It's, like, think, think about this. That game came out in 2017. Eight, 17 or 18. I think yeah. 2017. And it's still Here we are, selling. 2024, still on the line. Yep. Yep. So, I, I, wish, you know, I, wish they, uh, I wish they still did the comic book art. 100%. Mm. I, I mean, I like, awesome. I like you get the one? regular. I, I might. I would possibly get, I would probably get a pro with the comic book art if they still sold it. Yeah. New so, box. but fair. I'm not going to pay like nine or 10 grand be, just because it was comic book art. The, what I will say pro to premium, the premium gives you the whole hyper, hyper speed mech. Um, it is really Hyperspace. hyper loop. Hyperloop? Yep. Hyper loop? Yeah. Uh, it, Abba? It is. The jo <laughs> the jo Abba. It is very cool. When you get a ball up there and it whips it, it is very cool. Ping. But Ping. it is a hurry up. And so to hit that, like it's it's challenging enough that um like my brother's only experienced it a handful of times. I don't think my wife would ever be able to hit that shot to experience that. That is sexist. 
so, <laughs> um, it's because so, she doesn't play pinball. I know it's a it's okay. a lack of skill. It's I'm just not a, we got to clear a, that for the listeners. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so it's a huge mech, and it's something that's really exciting. So for a novice to step up to it and be like, "Well, how do I do that?" It's like, "Well, good luck." Is basically the answer. Um, so I could see it. If I could see why people own the pro. Uh, one thing I don't know, does the Pro have the three different color GI? Do you know? Because that know. having the red, blue, and white lights is that really adds a ton to the light show. But I mentioned earlier the the Death Star that blows up. I it's happened so rarely that to not have that on the Pro, I don't think you're missing anything. Um, so I could see it. I could see people wanting to own the Pro. I think the Pro would be a fun game, but unfortunately. Now there's really not a ton of entertaining mechs that you're going to experience in the in the pro, but the code it does the movie justice. It, there's a ton of sound clips, there's a ton of video clips. It feels like Star Wars. It sounds like Star Wars, um, and I love the way you can play the game and attack the game. So um, I know I'm late to the party. This is a David Dennis cold take here, um, but it's a good game. <laughs> it's I, I actually I get it. I understand why there are people that own Star Wars that say it'll never leave my collection. And I didn't understand that before because it it would just kick my butt. Um, so yeah, that's my, any, do you guys agree? Disagree? You've owned it. Tom, apparently will buy it again. I hope they keep making Star Wars for as long as possible. Because it sells. They sell. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's just like we talked about before is the main thing that people in the pinball industry need to realize is that everybody that discovers pinball all the themes are brand new to them. First time they see it. So they're going to naturally gravitate towards your S tier themes. And Star Wars is definitely that, you know, regardless of what's going on with Disney right now and Mandalorian acolytes, Ahsoka, all that. Yeah. Bottom line is the original trilogy, people still respond to that incredibly well. So it's just, yeah, it's just a game that they could, if they can hold on to that license, just keep pumping it out because people will keep, purchasing it i mean that's just the reality of it it's just it's a great theme i have an uh, answer yep. to joel's question i'm ready I'm ready for my answer the pro premium premium and le all have the tricolor oh GI. so the only there difference between the pro and the premium is the hyper the hyper speed loop and the and exploding the death star yeah okay i could yeah. see it i could see why you are fine with the pro like i could you know what's fantastic about the game also that was, I, I don't know how they came up with this decision, but in hindsight, it was an incredibly smart decision. The fact that even that game that's right behind you there, Joel, that's the premium, correct? Correct. Which is Darth Vader, very prominent, Yep. right? Sith and all that. So they mm. made sure to oh, lean into that. And if, Boba if, Fett. Everybody right. loves Boba Fett. Imagine if that would have been on the Ellie instead. Mm. I, I don't know if people would have responded as much because Darth Vader is just such an iconic character. Just the fact that they can keep having the opportunity to get that game, the premium version of it over and over again. So it's just because I remember when that first came out, a lot of people were thinking that the Sith, and I even thought this too, should have been on the LE, mm. something like that. But I'm so glad that they didn't do that. And that's still accessible to people today because you can still choose like the pro, right? The trans light, I think is all the hero characters, yep. correct? I'm trying to picture it in my in my head. So yeah, it's just... Yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about the game. I mean, there's there's stuff in there I wish was a little bit different. Sure. But I owned a premium for a few years until I finally, like you mentioned earlier, Joel, I did everything that you know there was to do on it, so I needed a break anyways. But it's, yeah, it's a fantastic game in terms of just seeing the ball whip around and just the sights and the sounds. And if you put a subwoofer on it and mm. you hear the theme music just pop off, I mean, that's that's a cool... Yeah. Cool moment right there. And if you can destroy the Death Star, very cool moment as well. I did it. I did it on stream and it was cool. It it was a it was a really enjoyable moment. So it's um it was just kind of a surprise. It it kind of comes back to we've said this before. Um, you know, I love location pinball, but you really can't fully experience a game until you get it in your house in a controlled lighting, a controlled sound environment where you're not worried about pumping quarters into it just play it and learn it and that's where you can really digest a game and and yeah this was a situation where i had the ability to do that and my outlook on the game completely changed so um yeah it's a great game but well we are out of time that was we, short 
that was I tried. I tried. We're out of time. <laughs> There's always more to talk about. <laughs> I'm sensing sarcasm, Tom. Yes. No, no, um, no. Yeah. It's because uh, you know, the it's like the improv thing, the and yes and yes and, you know. So Travis like says, but then he asks a question and then you agree and then you ask, you know, it's hard Tra- to just shut it off. We should applaud Travis as I hit my mic. Uh for not his camera did not go out. He's learning for the fiftieth episode. This is, a this is monumental. A st- this is the step a step in the right direction. Especially how busy he's been. Yeah, there's um there's more <laughs> stuff to talk about. Hopefully we won't uh hopefully we won't be as long until we record again. Um, my guess would be uh Stern. Hopefully we'll re- announce another game by the end of the month, maybe. Uh, so hopefully we can record there's, after that I announcement. Got a, I got a hint. There's some games coming. Mm. I, I, I believe Ooh. that there's going to be more pinball showing Ooh. up. Ooh, more pinball is good yep. pinball. Yeah. 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 So let's uh yeah let's plug it up. Tom, plug away, man. Hi, I'm Tom. <laughs> oh, do, do I hit the Tom more than that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I I podcast here on Triple Drain with Joel and Travis, but I also stream pinball on Fox City's Pinball. So if you'd care to watch that, uh, follow me on Twitch and YouTube. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, go for it, Travis. Sweet. So my name is Travis. I do podcasting here on Triple Drain. I'm also on YouTube via the Pinball Company. And I sometimes even show up on Fox City's Pinball whenever he's streaming tournaments when I'm on there. And then occasionally I will heckle Joel whenever mm. he tries to stream as well. <laughs> appreciate that. Yep, True, always I always appreciate that it. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> my name's Joel. Obviously, I do this podcast. And then uh, I stream for Flipping Out on the Flipping Out YouTube channel every Wednesday night. Uh, between chatting streams or gameplay Joel streams friends. with my brother. Yeah, Joel and friends or Jared and Joel uh, <laughs> streaming. It's a good time. It's a good time. So check us out on YouTube. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and comment on all that. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. We do a lot of different stuff here on the show and uh, we have a lot of different opinions, but it's always fun to come together and talk um, and have a good time. So once again, happy birthday, Travis. Um, congrats on making it to 40. And um yeah. Just I'm looking forward to all the butt stuff that comes with it. Apparently. You gotta do like colonoscopies and all that. So you know. wow. okay. Well, on that note, uh Tom, you get the oh, last take words. It away. Yeah. Play more pinball. <laughs> <laughs>